Over the years, there have been many celebrity interviews that have been extremely awkward. A lot of times, this is due to the interviewer saying something they shouldn't, but sometimes it comes down to the celebrity. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most uncomfortable interviews of all time, starting with Jonah Hill. Jonah got his big break in 2007 with the release of the comedy movie Superbad. From there, he starred in various other comedy movies, many of which performed very well. Despite his success, many in the industry disregarded him as just a funny fat guy due to his weight and movie choices. But in the 2010s, he started taking on more dramatic roles and showed he was far more capable of an actor than people were giving him credit for. He also managed to lose a ton of weight and get in the best shape of his life. But even after all that, he still had to put up with interviewers like this. Yeah, I mean, you look great. Everybody wants to know what, what, what made you make the change. Uh, I just decided one day I wanted to be healthier and I went and saw a nutritionist and uh, that's what I did. Stuck to it. But are you still considered the fat guy when you go to a party or anything? Because I run into that a whole lot. I'm, I'm the fat one. So does that, does, are you the fat guy in Hollywood still? Or, or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know, this is great, now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? A few years after this, Jonah made the film War Dogs with Miles Teller. During the press run for the movie, they made an appearance on a French talk show. Here, one of the hosts began describing her sexual fantasy to Jonah and ended the story by completely embarrassing him. Fantasme, en fait, ce serait qu'on se retrouve tous les deux dans une chambre d'hôtel le soir. Euh, on discute, voilà, vous, vous me faites rire, vous me faites beaucoup rire. Et là, d'un coup, vous ramenez vos potes euh, DiCaprio et Brad Pitt. <laughs> vous this was insanely awkward, and it was made worse by the fact that everyone was looking at him with looks of pity. He hit back at the host by saying he's glad he came to the show to get ridiculed by the local weather girl. But from the look on his face, you could tell what she said got to him. After this, Jonah cancelled almost all his remaining interviews in France. The host later apologized for the joke, saying, Jonah, the problem is that for 10 years, I've lived with you through your films. In fact, Jonah, I really had the impression that I knew you. So last Friday, I thought I was just messing around with a friend. But the reality is that we are not friends. No, the reality is that you have two Oscar nominations and I have two videos on my YouTube accounts. You have made films with Scorsese and Tarantino. And me, I have made an advert for Spontex. Big thanks to Dragon Mania Legends for sponsoring this video. Dragon Mania Legends is a free-to-play dragon simulator game that's on mobile, tablet, and Windows PC. The game starts with you hatching your first baby dragon. Then you raise it by feeding and training it, and watch as it becomes bigger, stronger, and more ferocious. You'll have your own personal dragon island where you can build all kinds of different habitats for your dragons. There are so many different types of dragons for you to discover because you can breed them to unlock all new ones. When you've trained your team and feel ready, it'll be time to lay claim to the land stolen by the evil Viking rulers. The only problem is they have dragons of their own, so you'll need to be prepared for a fight. As you defeat enemies, your dragons will gain experience, allowing them to unlock new skills and special attacks. You'll have to choose which skills you grant them wisely, so you can build out the most well-balanced and effective team possible. To get the ultimate head start, download the game using this QR code or the link below and enter the code tell us more. You'll get 100k gold, 50k food, and best of all, the amazing black hole dragon. You don't want to miss out on this, so download Dragon Mania Legend today. One of the most famous stories in Hollywood of an actor turning their life around is the story of Robert Downey Jr. At one point in his life, he was heavily addicted to drugs and had hit rock bottom. But after a long and difficult battle, he managed to bounce back and he did it in the best way possible. Not only did he beat his addiction, but he also took his career to a whole new level, becoming Iron Man in 2008 and kickstarting what has gone on to become the most successful cinematic universe of all time. After achieving all that, you'd expect people to show him the respect he deserves and leave questions about his past at the door. But in 2015, interviewer Krishnan Guru Murthy had other ideas. During a promotional interview for Avengers Age of Ultron, Krishnan began probing into RDJ's personal life. Does that mean you're, you're not a liberal or that you came out of prison not being a liberal? Um, are we promoting a movie? To me, the thing Robert answered the question as diplomatically as he could, but it was obvious he was frustrated as he kept looking over at his team. Krishnan didn't take any of the verbal or physical cues Robert was giving him, and he proceeded to ask an even more touchy question. You've talked in other interviews again about um, your relationship with your father and the role of all of that in uh, you know, the dark periods you entered and, and taking drugs and drinking and all of that. And I just wondered whether, you know, you, you, you think you're free of all of that 
or whether that's still something I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. Okay. Bye. Thank you, guys. Are you... Oh, I'm sorry. I'd... <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, you're right. No, no, look, I don't want to do that. Can't blame him. He gave as many non-verbal warnings as possible, and the man kept pushing. RDJ handled that fall like a champ. This isn't the first time Krishnan's had a disastrous interview with a celebrity. Just two years earlier, he interviewed the famous director Quentin Tarantino, and what happened was even more awkward. Tarantino is known for incorporating a lot of gore in his movies, and Krishnan started questioning him on the link between movie violence and real violence. But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? I don't, I, well, I'm gonna tell you why I'm so sure. Don't, don't ask me a question like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not biting. I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. You I can't just, make me dance to your tune. I, I can't I'm, not, ever, I'm not a monkey. I I'm can't not, make you answer anything. I'm just, it, I'm well, asking and, you interesting and, questions. And, and I'm saying, and I'm saying I refuse. You'd think Krishnan would have learned his lesson from this interview, but clearly not. In 2014, Cara Delevingne landed her first lead role in a movie, playing Margot in Paper Towns. At this point in her career, she was known for modeling much more than she was for acting. So many people saw her as just a pretty face and didn't show her much respect. There was one occasion where she made an appearance on Good Day Sacramento to promote Paper Towns that she was given a really hard time. The host spent the entire interview talking down to her, with one even calling her by the wrong name. Carla Delevingne is in the movie. She joins us live from New York City to talk about Paper Towns. Carla, good morning. Hey. Hi, how you doing? We're doing all right. Nice to have you here. So the movie is based on a best-selling uh, book by John Green. You play Margot, uh, the star character there. Did you get a chance? Uh, the book is taught, I know, in a lot of high schools and such. Did you get a chance to read it, or do you even have time to sit and read? <laughs> These days, you're so busy. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. Yeah. Uh, no, of course, <laughs> I love the book. Nice I think try. the book's amazing. The interview was already off to a really bad start, but it got even worse when the third host started asking questions. I saw you in London talking a couple weeks ago on TV, and you seemed a lot more excited about it than you do right now. Are you just exhausted? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I'm still very excited. I'm, you know, the premiere was last night. It was an emotional... It was an emotional night. It felt like the end of an era, but I'm not any less excited than I was a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you, you... Maybe I had a bit more energy. It's the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you, seem, you do seem a bit, a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Yeah, no, I think it's just you. I think, I think it probably is us. Yeah. <laughs> well, then on that note... We figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> Cara Delevingne, thank you so much. She was in a mood. You make $5 million Jeez. for six weeks worth of work, you can pretend to talk to Good Day Sacramento with some oomph. Calls her the wrong name, insinuates she's not intelligent enough to read a book, straight up tells her she looks exhausted, asks her why she's so irritated, tells her sarcastically to go take a nap and drink a Red Bull, and continues to trash talk her once she's offline. So unprofessional. And of course Cara is irritated because she can sense you're belittling her. Vin Diesel is an actor who's most well known for his long-time role as Dominic Toretto in the Fast and Furious franchise. He's been in a relationship with Paloma Jimenez since 2007, and the pair have had three kids together. Despite the importance his character places on family throughout the Fast and Furious movies, in his personal life, Vin has run into accusations of infidelity. He can be quite flirtatious, and there's one interview he did back in 2016 which has become notorious. He was answering questions from a Brazilian reporter about his new movie, and for the first few minutes of the interview, you, everything seemed normal. Then out of nowhere, while speaking about some advice Tom Hanks once gave him, he started telling the interviewer how beautiful she is. Before that, I didn't know any movie stars, but Tom Hanks was the first one, and he, he God, you're so beautiful. God, she's so beautiful, man. <laughs> am I right or wrong? Look at her. How am I supposed to do this interview? Look at yeah. this woman. Tell me your story. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Go on, yo, man. Talk to me, baby. Tell me your story. <laughs> Tell me your story. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's let's go have lunch. My God, I love her. Look how beautiful she is. Thank you. God. Wow. Man. So, Tom oh, Hanks? Wow, man. The interviewer tried to get the conversation back on track, but just a couple minutes later, Vin started showering her with compliments again. I found out that you are a nerd like me. You love Dungeons and Dragons. I'm anything like you, because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I'm anything like it because I love so, it. <laughs> guys, really? Look how beautiful she is. You, you guys think it's a joke. How am I supposed to sit over here when I'm looking at such beauty? Come on, guys. She's so beautiful. I'm in love. I'm in love with the interview. <laughs> Weird that instead of saying to her, you're beautiful and directly complimenting her, he keeps talking to other people in the room saying, isn't she beautiful? Ignoring her and not allowing her to react. A strange power play, very weird interview. At this point, it was pretty obvious the woman was getting creeped out, but she was doing her best to stay professional. It's as if Vin was on a mission to make her feel uncomfortable though, because towards the end of the interview, he got even worse. Eu sou o Groot. I sou o Groot. Eu sou o Groot. I love, I love her. Man, she's so fucking sexy. It's not, I can't do this interview. Look at her. Does anyone say this? Guys, what's wrong? Am I the only one that's saying it? Look at her. She's so fucking beautiful. It's like you can't even do an interview with her because you're just like, da, 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 da. Right or wrong? Oh my God, guys, someone save me. When did this turn into beautiful world? When did this turn into the most gorgeous girl in Brazil? When did this turn into I love you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Following this, the interviewer uploaded a video to her personal YouTube channel where she discussed what happened and gave her thoughts on Vin Diesel's behavior. She began by saying how awkward and unbearable he was and went on to say, he began to hit on me in the middle of the interview, saying that I was pretty, and he interrupted the interview three times to talk about it. I was laughing, completely uncomfortable. I was not sure what to do. I just laughed because it was a very delicate situation. I didn't like it. At the time, I didn't know how to react, but you'll see that I was uncomfortable. It was not nice that he interrupted my work. Not only is Samuel L. Jackson a big character when he's on screen, he's also a big character off screen. He has a great sense of humor, but he's also a no BS, say it how it is kind of person. He doesn't shy away from a confrontation if a situation calls for it. And there was one interview he did in 2014 where he gave the interviewer a piece of his mind. When discussing recent projects Jackson had been working on, the interviewer brought up a Super Bowl commercial he was in. Jackson was confused because he hadn't been in a Super Bowl commercial and it quickly became clear the interviewer had mixed him up with another famous black actor. Lawrence Fishburne. Working for Marvel, the Super Bowl commercial. Did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? Oh, you know what? I've been my mistake. I, you see know what? what? See, you're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? Oh. We don't all look alike. Oh. Oh. You're we may be right. all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. Don't look alike. I am. I. I am guilty. Um, I am guilty. I am guilty. He thought guilty. you were Bob Dylan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're the entertainment he, reporter. I know. Oh, you're the entertainment reporter right. for this station. And you don't know the difference between. I know. My, my mistake, uh, my mistake, I apologize. Uh, Jackson kept making him squirm for another minute after this. And when the interviewer got off the line, he acknowledged his screw up. That is a tape now that I believe is now going to have a life I, all I of its own. Right. Oh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see on YouTube. Right. In the reporter's defense, he's not the first person to confuse Jackson and Fishburne, as apparently it had been happening for years. I was doing an interview in New York almost 20 years ago, and woman from Texas came up and interrupted the interview. And, I don't mean to bother you, but I can, can I have your autograph, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> and so I gave her, I wrote, you know, blah, 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 Sam Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> For the people I've talked about so far, an awkward interview is something out of the ordinary. But for Kanye West, it's almost expected. Over the years, Kanye has made numerous appearances on talk shows where he said something offensive or gone off on an angry rant. So there are a lot of moments of his that could make this list. But I'd say one of, if not the most uncomfortable interview of his was on Sway's Universe in 2013. About halfway into the conversation, they started talking about Kanye's shoe brand, Yeezy. Kanye began explaining how he needs a big company like Nike to invest in it so he can make his vision a reality, but Sway suggested he build the brand by himself. This set something off in Kanye and he went absolutely ballistic at Sway. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google. Now who's gonna be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't yeah. got the answers. Kanye. I, you, you ain't got you, the if, answers. If you, if, you, you ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what you ain't more got, than me? 
Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the Kanye, answers. Relax. You ain't got the bro, answers. Rela- I'm asking you. You a ain't question. been doing the education. Bro, you ain't been doing the education. Kanye. Calm down. You don't have the answers though, Calm down. because you're trying to give me advice about no, something. No, 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 you ain't, no, no. you Listen. ain't got the answers. You ain't spent thirteen million dollars of your own money trying to empower right. yourself. Yep. But I spent hundreds of thousands and doing putting out clothing lines at a smaller degree. All I'm asking you, I'm, and then, but, and but, it but, ain't but, no Ralph though. Uh, it, it ain't Ralph but, but, level. But let me ask you this. I'm asking What's the you? name of your clothing line? We don't know. This was pretty savage from Kanye because Sway was only trying to help. From that day, the whole Sway not having the answers thing became an internet meme. But the irony is, he was actually right. Well, kind of. Kanye is now selling his shoes direct to consumer since his partnership with Adidas recently ended. And he went on the record addressing that old interview with Sway. So Sway, almost 10 years ago, said, man, why don't you do it on your own? Was he right? You know what? I will go ahead and say Sway had the answer. Over the years, Tom Cruise has done some interviews that are pretty difficult to watch. Once, he made headlines after jumping on the sofa during an appearance on Oprah Winfrey's chat show to declare his love for then-girlfriend Katie Holmes. And that same year, he argued with Matt Lauer about the practice of psychiatry, calling it a pseudoscience. Then there were the many videos of him pushing Scientology, which is the highly controversial religion he belongs to. But his most awkward interview happened in 2005 with Peter Overton, when he was asked about his relationship with Nicole Kidman. Tom and Nicole had divorced four years prior, and Peter started prying into their relationship. Was Nicole the love of your life? I mean, how do you answer that that question? I loved Nick very much. There's no question. Peter went on to ask an even more personal question, after which Tom completely shut him down. And do you have a relationship where you you talk it's a parenting relationship and talk professionally about each other's why don't we why listen here's here's the thing peter you're stepping over a line now you're stepping over a line you know you are i suppose they're questions that people want to know peter you want to know take responsibility for what you want to know don't say what other people this is a conversation that i'm having with you right now you're right okay so i'm just telling you right now okay just put your manners back in Do you think I was out of line? Yes, absolutely. Well, I apologize for that sincerely. When you think Hollywood actor, words like confident, outgoing, and charismatic probably come to mind. But for all his success in the industry, Jesse Eisenberg is quite the opposite. He's the introverted and awkward type. And during a press run in 2013 for his movie, Now You See Me, he had a really weird interview with Romina Puga. It started out with him questioning how she referred to Morgan Freeman, who was his co-star in the film. So Freeman plays a magic debunker. Freeman, who are you? Yeah, (laughs) Freeman? Yeah, what are you on a baseball team with him? Yeah, he's a buddy of mine. Okay. He then called her out for having things written on her hands. What did you write on your hand? Nothing. Well, I saw there was a lot of things. What was it? A lot of things. Are they questions? No. Are you secretly hiding questions (laughs) for the interview? You're wondering what it's like to work with Morgan Freeman and you can't remember that? uh, you know. Don't call Morgan Freeman Freeman like you're on a Little League softball team with him. From there, it just got worse. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, Carrot Top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, it's a good thing. It's I'm a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over, because um, otherwise I'll look like it was. Res- I'm responsible for it. Okay, so. Um, well, you are. Well, I don't want to know that though. Okay. Okay, well, so you know now. After this, she had him perform a magic trick since he plays a magician in the movie. Then she asked him to say her name into the camera, something she does with all her guests. Can I just have you say my name into the camera? Just the word Romina? Well, my name, not a word. And what's gonna happen to it? It's we'll not, skip not, it. I'll do the thing. We'll skip it. But I just wanted to know like like what to give it. You're trying to find me in a crowded place. Oh, okay. Romina. That's it? I would never yeah. hear you. The thing is I actually didn't want to find you. I was actually hoping to stay alone. <laughs> Such a jerk. Yeah. After the interview, Romina wrote a blog post where she spoke about her experience, saying she felt humiliated by Jesse. Apparently, after they wrapped up, she went behind a curtain to wait for the memory cards from the interview. She peeked around it to ask Jesse about his neighborhood in New York because he lives a few blocks away from where she used to. And he immediately said, you're still here? Clearly the incident really bothered Romina, but Jesse saw the whole thing differently. He said it was the most funny and interesting interview he'd had all day. So he was shocked when news networks began reaching out asking for a statement. He said, Listen, I would never want to upset somebody, and if I did upset her, obviously I would have acknowledged that. Apparently, he reached out to Romina to apologize, but he was unable to get in contact with her. 